We are live. This is the market update. Volatility got you down? Did you buy the top? Did you not buy it all? If you missed it or you didn't hit it right, don't worry. Trade location, alt season. Is it alt season? It was this morning, Friday, August. Uh, I'm sorry, Friday, August, April 14th. Because remember, people who had to sell crypto for tax day may have done so. How has this impacted the charts? Will Elon Musk have a competitor to open AI? Let's check it out. Let's welcome who's on the stream. Richard Barry here first from Georgia. Welcome. Driftless Crypto, Bull Runner, the regulars, we appreciate you. Ashton, Sinister Kloss, Robin, right? Sinister Kloss, Robin, welcome. Jeff. Yappy, JCH, Aiken with the Notorious Love, Duilo, Jeff, welcome to the stream. We are doing an on-the-fly Friday stream because of the volatility, keeping it fresh over the weekend. So this is your over-the-weekend tactical plan. Willa Meter from East Tennessee in the house. All right, Zach, LFG, exactly. Okay. Let's kick news first. Elon Musk plans artificial intelligence startup to rival OpenAI. So it's pretty clear that everybody who's anybody in Silicon Valley has to have AI. It's kind of funny because we all knew this was coming. Kai-Fu Lee's book told you it was coming. So now everybody's got to compete with ChatGBT. Frankly, it's probably only going to accelerate the quality of chat GBT. I have a short that's going crazy, you know, viral for me on the, my YouTube page, talking about Joe Rogan waking up one day and finding his podcast that looks like him and sounds like him out there generated by AI. Keep in mind when machines learn, okay, the more data you feed the machine, the more they learn. So, you know, feed it every Joe Rogan podcast. You can emulate people's voices and faces with AI and boom. Okay. Hence my deep dive into GAN, planetary alignments and seasonality of all types, right? In order to stay relevant because information matters, entertainment matters. Okay. And doing things that are unusual, even things that are mystical. Okay, Elon wants to go to outer space. He's got to get AI going so he doesn't get wiped off the planet and replaced by Skynet. Meanwhile, back at the economics ranch, U U.S. retail sales fall 1% as the, as the consumer continues to walk away from, from, from everything, right? The consumer is walking away from everything to the point where I think businesses are are actually pulling back what they produce. You know, I was in a home store last night. We're developing what I would call Studio B here for podcasts and other type of seasonal and GAN analysis. We're in some home goods retailer, and the guy's like, "You better get your, uh, you better get your outdoor set now because they shipped us what there is." Now, naturally, he was trying to sell us something. I I don't doubt it. Like when it comes to seasonal items, you either get it and it's gone or you're there with the leftovers because people know the consumer is going to walk away. Now, this is very relevant to crypto. Somebody remind me to look at injective INJ later in the, in the, in the broadcast. JP Morgan, Citigroup, Wells Fargo. Of course, they're making money from the bank walk. Wait, you mean a bank run? No, I mean a bank walk. Slowly but surely, deposits from regional banks are making their way over to large banks. Because anybody that has money in a regional bank doesn't understand that there's massive commercial real estate exposure. In other words, regional banks have lent massive amounts of money to people who build skyscrapers. And they're not going to get paid back on those loans. A record 30% of San Francisco office space is vacant. Who is holding the debt that financed all these buildings? Regional banks. 
Now, does that mean your money is safe in JP Morgan? I would urge you to think about this carefully, right? Why is Bitcoin rallying? Is it because a dollar in Bitcoin is better than a dollar in the bank? Yeah, Bitcoin can move 30, 40%, but are you going to have to worry about it disappearing and hoping the FDIC can open up a like a, a temporary zombie bank and then give you your money back somehow? You want to deal with that? Gold bullion, even to a certain degree, stocks, right? Stocks. Like, is whatever you're looking at, is it better than money in the bank? Cash in your house, a Target gift card. It's kind of my favorite idea, right? Take your money, put it in someone else's bank. Take your money, give it to someone else, have them put it in their bank. And you keep a claim ticket on their assets. Okay. Big firms are getting deposits. People are say, you know, they debate whether this is a sticky phenomenon. Okay. Like people are going back to the regional banks. <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> Not this year. And I don't think these big banks are safe from a disaster, either in liquidity for corporate bonds, which we'll, we'll talk about that. A disaster in real estate or a problem where somebody says, I want to take delivery of my physical gold. And they find out that <clears throat> every gold bar has a hundred owners. Now, if that happens, the clearing banks for the COMEX are going to have a predicament. They're going to have defaults. They're going to have people who say, I own gold and they're not going to get any. How does that affect these big banks? I don't know. But that was a hallmark of 2008. We were like, okay. The mortgage-backed securities market could blow up. How does that affect banks? We don't know. Well, we found out. We sure found out. Okay. Consumers expect prices in the next year to climb by the most in 2021. So inflation expectations are something that the Fed definitely looks at, right? Consumers expect prices will climb at an annual rate of 4.6% up from 3.6%. So, yeah, I mean, people are experiencing inflation, so they tend to expect more inflation. That freaks the Fed out. Now, that said, the expected rate of consumer inflation is roughly equivalent to Fed funds. So I have no idea what the rationale is to go beyond, say, 4.5% in Fed funds or go up to 5% when the economy is already rolling over and they've got Fed funds close to the expected rate of inflation. But this will probably be received badly. Again, it's probably a lagging number based on past experience. But what do I know? MasterCard Web2 or banking companies drops an NFT with perks for holders. Okay, MasterCard is trying to not be boring. The digital collectible is a part of MasterCard's Artist Accelerator program launched in January. Okay. Also, you know, you'll note that Matic has been used to generate these type of NFTs for Starbucks, Nike, and Reddit. And the thing that's unbelievable is everybody thinks Web3 is dead. And even today, April 14th, I mean, you had altcoins rush up and then get smashed, get smashed. Now, people are probably selling to pay their taxes. I get it. You know, the short squeeze in ETH was unbelievable. The Shanghai, the Shanghai event unlocked a lot of staked Ethereum. So if you had to sell billions of dollars in Ethereum, you would logically ramp it and just buy more until everybody got excited before you turned around and sold it, or you're not going to sell it at all. I mean, I work in the crypto industry, folks. If they want to take up the, they want to take ETH up to 3,100, they can rock on. I'm serious. Now, I still think Bitcoin is going to be king all through May. But as we said on yesterday's stream, sell in May and go away may not be in, in effect until the end of May. That this ETH rally has opened my eyes as to what could happen after this hybrid solar eclipse on the 20th. Now, for anybody who's new, who's listening, a hybrid solar eclipse is a very rare event. Okay. I learned about it from studying the work of William Gann, you know, who used 
planetary alignments to figure out markets. So in 10 words or less, here's how that works. Uh, a planet is like an actor on a stage. Every actor has a role that they play or something that they influence. Okay. And the actors with their costumes move around the stage to various points. So as planets that have roles and themes move around the stage, these movements can be key indicators for market seasonals. One of the big events is an a unusual solar eclipse where people will sing a ring of fire around the moon. And that's normally associated with crises. There are other things that indicate revolution, right? The crypto revolution. So as the crypto revolution unfolds, the SEC, the US government does everything it can to try to slow it down. So we're moving towards DeFi as a regulatory target, which is hysterical because centralized entities like Celsius and FTX blew up the whole world last year. And in December, everybody was saying crypto was dead. And four months later, they can't get enough of Bitcoin above 30K. Bitcoin was below 20 for like weeks or months. How times change. So this guy can go pick on whoever he wants to go pick on, whatever, whatever. I mean, he's going to go to court, right? And he's going to try to sue people. And the judges are going to say, there are no laws here to enforce. Okay, then maybe he can pass regulation on DeFi. And DeFi will just pack its bags and go somewhere else. Okay, meantime, you know, stopping crypto, good luck. Because it's a revolution. Right. And I know everybody in crypto says that, but I, I got evidence that says there is a revolution happening. Like whatever's going on now is the, you know, is the third movie in a series, the French revolution, the American revolution. And this is the crypto revolution in my opinion. And that's backed up by a series of very unique and very rare planetary movements. So you got planets telling you something, you got a solar eclipse telling you something. And to be honest with you, I had to call on this, right? I've been pounding the table saying the solar eclipse meant the destruction of the old and the ushering in of the new. The new is crypto. These guys tried to FUD crypto, scared everybody, and the market rallied in their face. World's most influential central bank balance sheets have bottomed, meaning central banks are going to have to start supporting the economy because the economy is simply and plainly going to fall out of bed so crypto is rallying in advance of money being injected into the system, just like crypto declined in 2021 in advance of the tightening cycle. Crypto moves first, period, right? And larger players are buying crypto now because they know what's going to happen in September and October. Now, if you haven't tuned into the streams in the past, very, very reputable analysts that have won awards Okay, are talking about solar and lunar cycles pointing to an equity market event in October. And I have GAN based chat GBT work, which, by the way, is how I'm doing a lot of this GAN analysis that would indicate a possibility of a surprise geopolitical event like 9 11, strangely enough, in September. Okay, the people who know this stuff is coming. I know it's coming. Now you know it's coming. And smart money's probably known it for months which is why they're like, to hell with it. We're paying 28 and 29 for Bitcoin because we don't want to have to pay 60 later. And I got work that shows that I thought by calling for 34 Bitcoin, I was a moon boy. And it could wind up being 45, particularly if central banks have to come in and start printing. Because I don't, I don't even know if central banks can save the system in October. The only way to, to manage October is to save yourself. Popular tea shop, tap Solana. Again, Web3. Again, Solana, right? Solana at $10 was dead. Everybody's doing a Solana is dead at $10 video. I'm never touching it. I'm never buying it. It's tied to FTX. Blah, 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 blah. Solana phone's going to come out. They're going to start airdropping it. Everyone's going to look at their iPhone and go, what a backwards piece of, okay, what are you giving me? You're charging me $1,400 for this phone and giving me nothing. These guys charge me $1,000 for the phone, but then we're airdropping me stuff. 
You don't think people were, can carry two phones? People carried a BlackBerry and an iPod for years. First, they carried a Palm Pilot and an iPod, right? Palm Pilot was like an organizer. Then they went to BlackBerry and iPod. Then they just went to iPhone. And it was like, oh my God, it's a revolution. You don't think people would be willing to carry two phones, especially if one phone in the middle of a freaking, you know, recession, depression is actually paying you to hold it to the point where you could break even. London Stock Exchange to start clearing Bitcoin derivatives. So as Gensler slams Bitcoin, legacy institutions like NASDAQ and the London Stock Exchange slowly start creeping into crypto right? Who knows the crypto derivatives market, if this keeps up in legacy may wind up bigger than the spot market in Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is leaving the spot market. And I don't think liquidity is going to be there in October. Like if you want to buy a ton of Bitcoin, you're going to have to buy a company that has a ton of Bitcoin like Grayscale and MicroStrategy. And that's why big mutual funds can't get enough of MicroStrategy. Because they don't want to buy an ETF. They don't want to buy a futures contract because of all this regulatory BS. I mean, I think that's BS, but they don't want to deal with that. So they're just going to say, oh, MicroStrategy, computer company, tons of spot Bitcoin exposure. Like, you know, oh my God, we need a spot Bitcoin ETF. People, MicroStrategy is a spot Bitcoin ETF. 109 million Ethereum staked in the last 24 hours. So congratulations to the Ethereum community for not panic selling and dumping Ethereum. Uh, you know, weekly charts so that there isn't a whole lot of resistance until 3,100. So if this thing rallies all month of March, like if the solar eclipse, like if this is the sort of like water break that the market is taking, because the reason we're doing the stream, we're doing kind of a break-in stream for the weekend is that, you know, the market rushed all the way up and no doubt people fumbled in and then they dropped it. And then we're going to go into interpreting, you know, what that means. Okay. Now, just a brief word. Um, it seems like I missed the Ethereum rally. Like I was stupid bullish on crypto. But I wasn't screaming for a 10% rise in Ethereum. So time to move on and learn from my mistakes. It wasn't a disaster, but I'm saying if you missed it, it's okay. It's okay if you missed it. Now, let's talk about charts. Let's like welcome who's here. Okay, Big Rich, altcoin overtime. Yeah, he's looking for altcoin overtime. We'll, we'll rock everything we can rock today for sure. Okay. Um, Rudy is saying that there was a huge spike in packs. Sheb is here. I'm doing okay. Okay. Big Rich says Arbitrum is mooning. Yes. Like the last bull market. Yeah, that is, that is the airdrop play wrong again, cash, gold, and crypto. Okay. Bears are going to face the music. Got to watch out when people are done with the tax law selling. Donato with the notorious love. Okay. Raj is here. Fernando. Okay. Alexandra is here. Welcome. Okay. Now on planetary alignments, don't forget to check out a new experimental controversial video series that I'm doing with somebody who knows crypto, astrology, and drum roll tarot cards. There's two videos on there, Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And we had kind of a small coin altcoin showdown for tongue and cheek. I'm not fooling around about planetary movements. You know why? Because come October and November, you're going to be screaming for your mama, a religious figure for somebody, and you're going to need friendly voices, male and female, to help you navigate through it. So I'm getting ahead of the curve. Make sure you check those videos out. And hello from Montreal. Now, Bitcoin. I missed it. I'm upset. Right? That's what you're saying. So here's DeMarc. 
okay? This is a quantitative trend measuring system. Let's keep it simple today. This 13 means Bitcoin should stop here. That's kind of what's happened. Resistance is at 31,500, but Bitcoin stopped short of 32K. 32K right here was the high uptick, basically off the Celsius debacle. Like that was when we realized that everything was actually not all right. And then there was going to be an FTX mess after that. Interesting how Bitcoin pulled up short of 32. In other words, they don't believe this rally. They don't. I mean, it rushes up. People take profits. That makes sense. I mean, if I was trading at an institution or a hedge fund and, you know, I made a hundred percent return on Bitcoin or I, I caught, you know, 27 to 31 on 5X leverage, I would take profits and go out to dinner and come back next week. But they pulled up short of 32. Now, to me, when you have resistance points like this, right, if they pull up short of it, when and if they go back up and test it, they blow through it. I've seen this on the downside in bear markets from 2008. So when they run scared of resistance, careful. Because if the dip is shallow, which it could be, right? Because in bull markets, I was like, oh my God, I need a dip. Or, oh my God, this thing is so overdue for a correction. Yeah, those people frequently wind up buying the top. They wind up buying the top, right? So if you pull up short of resistance, you have a topping signal, and then you start to come off, or you, I'm sorry, you don't come off. So here's Bitcoin on a four-hour chart with the DeMarc work, okay? So, I mean, this is pretty clear what this meant, right? You had a 13 top. You had resistance at 31,750. The DeMarc system automatically draws these lines. So you had a 13 top, you had a nine top, you had divergences on multiple different time frames, and they smack it down, right? Everyone takes profits and boom. You got support at 29,854. I'm sure if this thing went back to 27, like the institutions that have been buying it would be drooling over. Now, Ethereum, four-hour chart, same thing, right? These kind of God candles here, this may be institutions like either flooding in or shorts covering all at once from institutions. So everyone covers, everyone FOMOs in, and then they turn around and drop it. So this was forced buying. Sometimes when you get these late stage God candles, then you get the 13 top, then it comes off, but support is at like basically 2032. So if it holds above 2032 and you can see people just can't wait to buy it down there, you know, you got to watch out that you don't wake up like two or three days from now. And this thing is much higher. Like, you know, I, I underestimated this thing before, and now I'm not underestimating the altcoin sector in general, back to Bitcoin. Okay, I thought I was a total moon boy for suggesting that if Bitcoin broke above a Fibonacci speed resistance fan at 27, I'm sorry, Fibonacci speed resistance fan. That's what they call it. Okay, I'll just pull it up here on TradingView so you can see it. Where that indicator actually is. Okay, it's right there. Fib speed resistance fan. Okay, I thought I was a moon boy suggesting that if you broke this line, you could go to 34. Like here, here's the, you know, the big picture, right? You connect that high and that low. Okay, and then that gives you a set of lines that you work off of. You know what? I got an idea. What happens if this thing goes ballistic in May? What happens if sell in May and go away means you sell at the end of May at some crazy chat GBT generated price off a new moon in, in the Scorpio sector of space in May, May 18th, May 25th, maybe something like that. I mean, what happens if the 
rally is not 27 to 34. What happens if the rally is 30 to 45 and then you get a dip in June back to 30? Crazy, right? So if you got chopped up in here, forget about it. Just clear the deck and, and just like reload your mind and reload everything that you've been thinking. Okay, let's go to a four hour chart of Bitcoin on trading view. So one thing that you're going to notice is that, you know, you got a big new high in price and you got a lower high in momentum indicators. So that's pretty bearish. I mean, tactically. Uh, what I have seen, I don't, I don't want to tell you that this means you have to rush in. I don't think you do, but sometimes in bull markets, people with major conviction are the ones that win. So if, if, if this thing retraced 23% of the entire rally, it would go to 28.2. Is that possible based on this? Yes, it is. So if it went down there, you would actually be happy. But I suspect that's a little bit too tight. Sometimes when you have big trends, these negative divergences, sometimes they don't work. What's the point? If you have bearish indicators like 13 tops, nine tops, bearish divergences and stochastics when prices make new high and momentum indicators make lower highs and then cross over, you have bearish events. And the market does not go down. If something's supposed to go down and it doesn't, what's it going to do? It's going to go up. Okay. So I don't want to be a moon boy, but I want to underscore that if people ignore these signals, this could go up. This could just go up. Okay. Now I want to go to PowerPoint next. So I can pound the table. Okay. Dollar index up today, bouncing. Who cares? The 2022 rally on the DXY weekly chart, you know, it went from basically 93 to 103 in roughly 17 weeks. And I think the dollar index is going to unwind that trade and go from 103 to 91. That's my hidden pivot target. That's where it's probably going to be not investment advice on by July 23rd, which is why in crypto, I want to take the approach of like buy in July and let it fly. Let's hope that's right. Dollar lower. Now what starts to happen is as people start to realize, oh my God, there was a failed rally in the dollar. You know, everybody starts to get shorted. You can start to like get choppy, just like Bitcoin. Right. I mean, who doesn't understand at this point that crypto is going to be a solution to the legacy problems. So when everybody gets one way, you can get chop. But remember that hybrid solar eclipse on the 20th is very good for crypto. So first it was Bitcoin. Then it was Ethereum. Then you may have some altcoins. You may have Cardano. Like I have no idea why Avalanche is not moving. We'll cover that in a minute. Hey, this is Avalanche. I mean, I can draw, easily draw an avalanche move to 22 or 23, showing that there's really not a whole lot of resistance in the way here. These guys have a partnership with Amazon, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it or if I skipped over it in the, in the research, but Bank of America is now out joining Citibank and saying you're looking at $4 trillion worth of tokenized assets in the near future. Because corporate bonds, venture capital, small companies, commercial real estate, junk bonds, mortgage-backed securities, there's no liquidity. There's no liquidity. You know, you know what you take for granted in markets? That there's a red button and a green button and you can hit either one and something will happen. Well, guess what? Do not assume liquidity in legacy. Matter of fact, legacy is telling you. Like BlackRock said it, Citibank said it, now Bank of America has said it. There's no liquidity in 
in legacy to the point where they're willing to tokenize everything. If you had gone up to investment banks four years ago and say, hey, let's tokenize stocks, bonds, and real estate, they'd be like, you're crazy. That's going to hurt our ability to issue and make money from helping people issue stocks and bonds. They, they're willing to cannibalize their business model to get liquidity. Avalanche has a security token function, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, meaning they have a blockchain that could handle security tokens. No idea why Polkadot, like Polkadot rushed up today and they sold it. Polkadot has got a security token play itself. Polymath, which has become Polymesh, wants to run on Polkadot. Interoperability is key and no one wants it. But yeah, a conceptual altcoin versus Bitcoin. Okay, I get it. But really, you know, Bitcoin doing this and Polkadot doing nothing. I don't know. I don't think so. Just a reminder, tax season is three days away. It's over in three days. These guys, Pro Bitcoin Solutions, the link is down below. They're doing $20 per chain. So you have a coin, you need to pay taxes, right? On that coin, they'll look at each coin for $20 per coin. That's half off what they regularly charge. And people that come in through me get $50 off a report that you could use to file your taxes if you had to do it at the last minute. Right. They give you, as I understand it, they give you a CSV file that you can give to an accountant and they give you an 8898. I believe that's what it's called. So that if you had to just, you know, go to QuickBooks, boom, these guys can turn it around. They do Bitcoin forensics. For example, if you've lost your Bitcoin, they can help you find it. Okay. Avalanche, uh, 20 is one target. 26 is another. Again. They have a partnership with Amazon, and I guess that doesn't matter. Everybody's trying to make chat GBT. I think when everybody's already announced that they're doing chat GBT, they're going to have to start announcing that they're doing something with crypto. Otherwise, you know, they're already embarrassed. They're, I mean, like Apple. Like, you know, Apple has got like, you know, they got to get something on that phone. Great publicity stunt with the Bitcoin white paper inside, inside of everybody's Apple computer. Okay, Solana, 27. Talked about this. Okay, let's go to, let's see who else is in the chat. Okay, we have Rugby Performance Labs, Thomas. Okay, we have King is here looking at audio. All right, so let's, let's crack into some altcoins here. Okay, so not surprising. Let's just start with like a four-hour look. So it's not surprising that altcoins would rush up. Whoops. Not surprising that altcoins would rush up and then get sold right before tax season. I mean, basically the market gave somebody, you know, the highest point in a couple of months to unload for taxes. So people unload and then it comes back, right? And I think you have to look at some of these old coins on a weekly basis, right? Like, you know, if audio is web three, there's a moving average down here that has, you know, been support one, two, three, four, five, six weeks in a row. So, I mean, if this crypto rally, right? The title of the stream is, do you see alt season. What I can see is altcoins rallying in like a 10 day period. Like I know everybody wants to return to, you know, where everything 10 X is, but I'm talking about a thing where, you know, you could have a zone maybe even after, you know, maybe the start of May is corrective. Like maybe institutions FOMO in at the end of the month to show that they've owned crypto. There's a dip in the beginning of May. And then everybody starts buying altcoins because hedge funds have to chase performance. You know, so you know, audio is something to look at. And whereas before I'm like, okay, well, yeah, this is nice. Okay. Now I'm, I'm, I'm way more interested. Okay. You know, Theta, you know, is doing a one, two, three. This is like in DeMarc speak, this is the start of an uptrend. 
like way I'm going to explain this is this is quantitative technical analysis. When you see nines and thirteens, that's the system's way of measuring a trend and saying it might be over. So when you see thirteen and nine near each other, that mean that can be it. Now here it's like one, two, three. This trend could be just starting. Yeah, there's resistance here, but this is a weekly chart. You could have six more up weeks in theta. Okay. Well, again, think Solana to 32. I have no idea why everyone's given up on Solana. No idea whatsoever. Again, you know, your, your chart point in Solana is something like 27 and it pulled up short, right? So you have one, two, three, four, five. This is a daily chart. You could have six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, I don't think 26 is going to act as support. I'm sorry. I, I don't think 26 is going to act as resistance. And the thing that's sick about Solana, right, is if you get above 26, I mean, look at this air pocket here. There is, there is nothing stopping this thing. Like, there is nothing stopping that thing from going to 36. You know, everyone thought I was out of my mind when, when Solana was at 10, and I said it was going to 14. Or 20. People are like, yeah, whatever, man. Now it's the same thing all over again. Like people are sleeping on this stuff. I don't think that's a good idea. You know, Cardano is trying to wake up. Okay. Weekly chart. Again, all these, all these things are in like a start of an uptrend. Cardano's got resistance, but you know, I care less every day. Now, Cardano did get to resistance. This, this is a tough area around 43 cents. You know, that's a tough area. Okay, Cardano takes out 43 cents. You're probably looking at a 10 cent rally. I was on a show yesterday. Somebody was looking at ETH Cardano. I can actually pull this up. This is very interesting in the sense that this is Cardano versus ETH on a weekly basis. So if ETH moons, doesn't it stand the reason that they could take Cardano with it? Cardano is at a, a really big historic low versus ETH. And it's been here since December. Like this is a weekly chart. So, I mean, you know, it sits here for a while. It could go up. Same thing was true here. It sat here for a while and then boom, same here. It sat here for a while and then boom. I mean, you know, this guy who came up with this yesterday, I was like, whoa, look at this Williams oscillator near zero. I mean, I, I, I did, you know, I looked at this, I'm like, oh my God, like if you, even if you expand out the Williams oscillator, right, whoops, you expand this out, right, that Williams oscillator close to zero, that can trigger a move. And I'm going to ask this simple question. What happens if YouTube coins like Cardano and ETH start breaking out? That people are going to go nuts, right? They're going to go nuts. Right. And you could have these like 10 day spikes. Whereas, you know, you may have to try to buy a dip, even though there's bearish divergences in Bitcoin. Sometimes when you get a rush up and then you get profit taking, that is the dip. Like if there's like a, you know, people who make money in these type of markets, they have very high conviction. Like they are like, I am buying, and, I, and I'm, I'm with you on this. I am buying every single dip. You can come stop me out. Come stop me out. I'm buying every single dip. Okay, Gala, right? Resistance at 41 cents, bites the dust. Goes up to another resistance at 45, comes off back down to support, right? The old ceiling here on a four-hour chart is now the floor. It's now the floor. So, I mean, you know, do you want to be short something that's perched on support? When you could have, you know, 
two more up days or four more up days. Right? I mean, this could get wild. So it may not be alt season as in like, you know, alts, alt coins forever. But, okay, somebody asked in Twitter for INJ. Okay, now you think you think you missed INJ, but have you? I mean, yeah, it's up a lot, but I mean, this is what could happen. The person who wrote in said, I think it's the next Solana. Okay, well, I got news for you. There could be three more updates. There could be six more updates. Like this is a good example that there are altcoins out there that if they want, you know, if they want it, they're going to take it up. There's probably a lack of liquidity in these things to the point where big buyers can push it. Uh, which is better, DeMarc or GAN? Uh, DeMarc is probably easier to learn. You can buy software and learn it. You know, uh, they're both usable for price and time. I think DeMarc is better for tactical work. GAN is, is how I put together these roadmaps, like these crystal ball things. I started doing that last year. It worked out. And guess what? I'm the proud owner of a crystal ball. People are tuning in for the roadmap. And, you know, I'm taking road mapping to the next level. The next level. My producer gave me a topic on planetary alignments and astrology for crypto. Like, I can't wait to start recording it. Bottom line is, DeMarc and Gan do price and time. Gan's a little bit harder to learn. DeMarc is, you know, kind of a visual system. But that's actually a pretty good question. Okay. F-E-T. Okay, so AI coins, the Musk announcement may have just changed all this. Honestly, like, you know, I was not a big fan. I was like, basically, if you're buying this stuff now, you know, it's still at resistance. But again, there could be four more updates of what happens if they take out resistance. Um, you know, it's interesting that this thing broke above a weekly resistance level at around 35, 36 cents. And there are big buyers coming in today. So the weekly look on this, I mean, this doesn't look like 10 more up days. This could be, this could be eight more up weeks. So all, all of a sudden, this makes certain altcoins more interesting because if Elon's got to get into AI, then all the big Silicon Valley players got to start plowing money into Web3. I mean, if this is not the dawn of Web3, I don't know what is. I, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't know what is. Okay, Chainlink. Okay, people can't get enough of Chainlink. Um, resistance was at 758. It broke out, but then it's coming back and retesting 758 all in one day. And I have seen this before. Here it is on the DeMarc work. Again, you know, you didn't get the 13 top, okay? But you came up, you rushed up, you, you retested support, and people are buying the dip. People are absolutely buying the dip. You can buy a dip and make money. It's a bull market. Rose. Okay. Rose on a four hour chart had resistance. Okay. So the big level in Rose is 0 0.066. Notice how they're rushing up, taking out resistance, and coming back and test it. Bulls counterattack and this closes above 0 0.0666. This could go, this could be a double bottom. Not perfect, maybe not a double bottom, but you know, this box has defined 
rows. You went outside the box, you came back inside the box. This could have four more updates. Okay. I mean, this, this is like a theme throughout, throughout the markets, right? Cardano, we did. Okay. Now, Michelle is asking, how do you determine if it's a dip versus a top? I'm assuming is the, is the answer, the question, which is a good question. Okay. So I think the first thing you have to do is rely on your roadmap, right? The roadmap is, you know, things can be bullish into the eclipse. So if your overall construct is bullish, you can stay with the bullish case. Now let's look at Bitcoin. There's a 13 top. There was a nine top. Normally, if you get something like this, if it was a top crypto would be getting slammed. Right. If you had real selling coming into the market, people were like, F this, I'm out. I think this would be a lot lower At, or it would be lower over the weekend. Now, the simple answer is you could just chill out and see how it trades around support. If people come down here and they see support, right? You see the dip. I mean, when you have these kind of bull markets, right? When this thing is, when this thing is trending up, like just look at Bitcoin, right? This is the trend up. Here's a red day right? So this thing goes up, you get one red day, then you had one day to buy it, it ranged and then up. You know, every time you see red, let's maybe go to a daily to try to get a better example. But I mean, you have been paid in Bitcoin to buy on red days or red weeks, right? You see big red candles, they buy. But if one red candle doesn't turn into two red candles, that was the dip. A dip can be a pause. How do you know? Well, find a support point. You're like, how do I find a support point? You can find a support point. Just look to the left, right? And here, DeMarc actually draws it for you. You can look to the left, but I mean, it's kind of, kind of sort of common sense, right? Like this was an area where it took off from. This was the FOMO and this is support. So if it doesn't break support, it's not a top, it's a dip. And as with all things, you know, it could come down here, dip, run everybody stops. And if support winds up holding, there's your answer. So, I mean, that, that is the question of the day, perhaps the question of the month. Thank you for asking it. Thank you for asking it. Somebody looking at QNT, you know, I saw they were kind of, you know, they were selling that pretty hard earlier today. Wild candlestick action pulled up short support at 107, right? Basically, they took it back down to where, you know, this previous bottom was in March and they couldn't wait to buy it. I don't know. It feels like they want it. Like whatever negative catalyst there was, it's still sitting on the top of this box right around 120. Okay. So, you know, this goes back to how do you know it's a top or a bottom? You know, they keep hitting this thing. This is weekly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. They have been pounding on 120 for seven weeks. Now, if it doesn't get above 120 and it doesn't hold there, I don't think you have to do the trade. I don't think you have to be in love with all coins, but I'm telling you, if we, we keep this idea in your mind of like, you know, once a spurt in all coins start, it could last 10 days. That could be the first week in May, right? Don't assign meaning to selling that occurs around things like options expiration, tax season, and maybe even something like a Shanghai event. I mean, ETH went up 10%. Okay. But are they going to come in and sell? You know, the real trade is after they've mooned it, does someone come in and buy the dip or are these guys going to be selling rallies? If they're selling rallies, it's Bitcoin only. It's Bitcoin to 45 and everything getting destroyed. But if I was playing in all coins, you know, if you were holding them and the market doesn't shake you out, leave it. Okay. If you're looking to get long, get long on support. Also get long on something that has a web three theme.
Okay, so D-E-X-T. Coinbase coin. Okay, resistance at 34 cents. Sort of an epic rally, but with the DeMarc work, I don't see much sign of a top. I don't know. You could have eight, two to eight more up days. Okay. You know, sometimes when you get a nine top, you will get a corrective action. And then watch out if it holds and it resumes. Okay. So, you know, these candles on a nine top, if someone buys the dip, it can go higher. Honestly, this looks pretty frothy, right? I mean, the DeMarc count's not bearish, so don't get me wrong. You know, but when you have these big wicks up in these things, it kind of takes a break. So just because altcoins may have an alt season that lasts 10 days, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take profits if you have it. And then maybe you can rotate that into something else. So we got 100 comments in the stream. Just a reminder to hit that like button on the way out. Support the channel. I'm supporting you. Hit the like button. Ren. Okay, so Ren is connected to Polkadot. That's how I see Ren. There's nothing here on the daily chart. And there's honestly nothing here on the weekly chart, right? It's polka dot dependent. Now let's pull up mark work on polka dot while I, I'm doing it. So again, this has done nothing. Bitcoin has done nothing but go up and polka dot is still trapped below resistance on a weekly chart at $7.40. They had a 13 top. They rushed up to kind of like the ultimate buying climax point. So it's hard to argue with people who are taking profits in Polkadot, even though I like it. But, you know, just a common sense idea. You know, Polkadot broke above a prior high. It lurched up and then it's coming back to retest it all in one candlestick. So if you go to like a 240 minute bar or, or like a four hour bar, right? It's this simple. Like, you know, you think I'm the only one seeing this, that there was resistance here in polka dot at 658. They rushed it up, dropped it. And then buyers came back in, you know, if Bitcoin chills out you know, like right before the eclipse, like I think the eclipse is stupid bullish for Bitcoin, but you know, after seeing what I saw in like Cardano versus ETH, forget about it. Okay. So looks. So, I mean, you've got a nine top. I mean, when you go from 14 to 16 cents, that's a pretty good rally. But looks has cleared out a lot of resistance points. And as you can see with this candle yesterday, what does it do? It rushes up. It comes back down. It looks like a top. You get the nine top. Listen, if this thing pauses here, I, I don't see, you know, I, I think you give this stuff a chance. I mean, look at the daily DeMarc work, right? You, you broke out. You, you close above 16 cents, you're breaking above resistance, you have a 13 bottom here. I mean, again, Web3 is, is not dead. It's not. Matter of fact, Web3 has got to wake up, in my opinion, because, you know, they, they, they have to buy it. There's no buying like force buying. Have we really seen forced buying in Bitcoin yet? I don't think so. I mean, we've seen a fairly orderly uptrend. Okay. So on Lusco, I had this like upward sloping resistance band or regression band. So we're at the top at $11.18. And it's probably going to take a fundamental shift to break it through there. Could that occur? Yeah. You know, Williams oscillator is mildly interesting.
I think 1160 is like the key level. Just mark the chart. I think if it takes out 1160, you're in business. I think this idea about a vertical move up, you know, these potential spikes, you know, especially if it's multi-day, it may not be every altcoin. It may be like big ones or highly favored ones, you know. You know, this Ar Arbitrum is, is a beast, right? I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot I can add to it. You know, up 15 to 20% in one day, right? This thing is, is full send. Let me see if there's anything on the DeMarc work on this. You know, it just kind of shows. It shows what can happen when everybody gets really excited about a coin, right? You have a nine top on the four hour chart. This is classic DeMarc, right? Nine top, temporary break in the trend, and this resumes. You could be looking at five more up days of this. You could be. Now, you want to buy it up 20% and not, not particularly. But you had a four-hour window to buy this thing. It goes down, it doesn't break, and everyone just piles in. This is a sign of forced buying. Like hedge funds cannot afford to not be long arbitrum. They can't. Okay. Near protocol. Again, more web three stuff that everyone gave up on. You have nice support at 216. They dropped it. They brought it straight back. Resistance at 233. And again, if you look at a weekly chart, I mean, the bigger the base, the higher in the space. This thing is just sitting here dead. Real resistance is probably at $5.80. I mean, yeah, I know a lot of people are not building on this, but I just don't think you want to fade these altcoins. The bottom line is you could be looking at 10-day spikes in altcoins. Bitcoin is still going to be the top dog, right? 34K or 45K is possible. If you're looking for alt season, you're going to have to be positioned for these five to 10 day spikes. You're going to get a lot of gratification and chasing late stage moves. Like if you get a five or six day rally in altcoins, don't chase it. You're going to have to be there or be ready. So that's it for this week. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We'll see you next time.